I um I said that I was gonna do a video um regarding my experience with the Vivans medication. I um I don't even talk about it at all because it was um it was so long ago, but it was such a long period of me having to take the medicine. Um. I was um, taking Vyvanse in 2019, oh, um, 2009, um, and that was ninth grade. I was at Douglasburg and moved back to my old neighborhood at the time. And I had to start taking medication um, for ADHD because apparently I laughed too much and was too happy and a distraction and all of that so basically what they did was they put me on Vyvanse medicine 20 milligrams and I was taking it for about half a year and during that year like I started having like extreme anxiety and panic attacks I couldn't sleep um, at night, insomnia, and my anxiety, my skin is peeling. My anxiety was, um, was off the roof, just like my thumb. Like, my skin has been peeling very badly, but, um, It was a very, um, it was a very horrible experience for me. Um, I don't even really talk about it much. Um, it's been so long since I really, like, dealt with that. I, um... I started taking um therapy for it. They were um actually had about three therapy sessions um in a week. Um my first therapy session would be with Dr. Matlock. Um and that's off of like Raper Road, that area over there behind where the um the pet smart is and all of that over there back over there back there in the cut i used to go over there and i was going to three forms of therapy i was going to dr madlock for verbal therapy i was speaking to this this black lady i don't remember her but she was one of the only ones who really like who i felt like really listened to me and when i told her that the medication was really messing with my head and I do not like talking about this. Um, <laughs> that was a very terrible time in my life, and I do not like going back there. Um, and out of the three therapy sessions, because the third one was was like a horse therapy, I was going out to this um this farm. And I think I kind of remember how to get there. But um, I was going out to this farm. And there were these two women. And there were like a bunch of horses. That, that was my first time experiencing horses. And I have been terrified of horses since. Like I was maybe about two feet. Like, everybody that went to school with me knew that I was short. I was so short for so long. And I just would not grow. Like, it took me until 11th grade to actually finally grow. Like, 
I was not happy in school at all. Like, I was not happy. And I know I was walking around the class clown. I was making other people laugh. I was completely miserable. Like, people was always bothering me. I was always getting picked on. People were always trying to put their hands on me. People were always trying to fight on me. Like, I hated school so much. I really hated school. I hated going there. The only thing that was really good was maybe like the few people that I really could like genuinely trust like while I was in school. And then other than that, like it was always easy for me to pass tests so I didn't have to worry about my classwork. I was that kid who was, who was usually done with their tests quicker than other people. So, and that was only because I had a bunch of time on my hands. Like, I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't go nowhere. So, um, the medication was very, um, it was very horrible. And I know I said I would post a video, but this is something that's always been very hard for me. Like, I don't speak about this. I don't try to go back. I don't try to think about none of it. I started um suffering from hallucinations and I remember one day I was sitting in class and this this specific teacher I know people remember him. He was funny though. He was he was quite funny. Um I'm not gonna say his name though. No. But it was math class and he actually had to, um, he actually had to put up a piece of paper with classroom rules and, and I was so strung out on the medicine and I was so anxious and, and I was so bothered that the only thing that really helped me was singing in that's one reason why I really love music. Like, music is like... Music is just that thing for me. And it's okay. It's totally cool. If, if people don't... If people don't get how... Honestly and genuinely, I love music. I remember I was um I was back in the foster care system. Um at the time I was taking the medicine again. Um I was having some family issues, nothing new. And I had to take the medicine, but I couldn't leave my room. So I would just sit in my room and I didn't have much in there. I didn't I don't watch TV I didn't watch TV then and I don't watch TV now so I would just be in my room and I remember I would just have this black radio like I couldn't have a cell phone either and the only time I could have called somebody was when the lady that was watching me was there and she let me call my sisters on three-way one time so I remember that I went back and visited her because she was really nice to me though but all I had was <laughs> my little radio. <sighs> Boy, that radio got me through some tough times, man. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I do not talk about this. I don't try to go back to that. <laughs> like, maybe for some people, maybe for some people that medicine worked. 
Maybe for some people, they could take medication and it wouldn't like mess with their brain and mess with their head. And I just, my experience with medicine was just completely horrible. And even after I stopped taking the medication, like I suffered horribly. I suffered horribly from anxiety. And Shire, the company, actually actually contacted him. And they sent me a letter and everything while I was living in Las Vegas. And I was just like, wow. Like they I called them in 2020. It was early 2020 because I just got back home. And I was staying with my sister. And I got that letter back then in 2019 because I had applied for insurance and I got insurance and I wanted to get checkups and stuff. So, excuse me. Excuse me. They sent me a letter because I emailed them. And I was like, hey. <laughs> hey. Shara, what's up? Like, y'all completely ruined, like, my teenage years. Like, I'm going to just let you know this right now. It was just, it was a very traumatic experience for me. And to anybody who's dealt with anxiety, like, that stuff is wild. Anxiety is wild, man. And I'm just thankful. I thank God, like, I don't deal with it like I used to no more. I don't I don't deal with the anxiety no more. Like there are times where I get bothered and stuff, but I don't deal with anxiety. And this is kind of like a release video for me too because I never ever talked about it. So I um Yeah, I despise medicine. I completely despise medicine like to the fullest degree and like the only thing that really really helped me through that time was church my eyes are totally like puffy and black My bad, y'all. I've been crying a lot today. Today just been one of them days for me. Like, today just it was just one of those days where, you know, you just sit in your room and you just cry. But it was a good cry, though, because I, um,. I'm just discovering purpose and that's painful it's really painful but uh, um I do want to urge like <laughs> every parent out there like if your child tells you that they going through some stuff please believe your child like Like, I just, like, I'm really not a talker. Like, I don't talk. I really do not talk to people. Like, I literally sit in my room by myself all day. I rarely call anyone. Like, life is different now. Life is very different now for me. Like, I don't. I don't try to get involved in things. I don't try to hang around people. I called my brother yesterday, though. Just to check on him. And I texted one of my sisters the day before that. But this medicine, I just... Medicine is just not... Medicine is not it. 
it's not it it's really not like people see medicine and they say oh, okay it's helping me now but those future side effects though like <sighs> it was horrible it was completely and utterly horrible like please don't put your children on medicine like but still i mean it just differs i guess it just differs with everybody like i had a lot of surgeries growing up as a kid so even then most of my family members were telling me oh you had surgery so you might be getting some um repercussions but not repercussions but you know you have surgery like even now like one of my scars like it itches like underneath my skin but it's only for some reason it only happens when something bad finna happen and i noticed that about my body like it really tells me when there's something wrong happening and i think people think i'll be joking about that like i just be saying stuff and people be looking at me like i'm crazy and then later on it find i find out it's true and then they looking at me like oh my gosh are you a magician are you that a no i listen to my body like after so long of like mistreating my body and letting people break me down use me over and 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 over again like i finally got to a point where i was just like what's wrong with me like why do i be letting people just use me and just break me down and then leave me like what's wrong with me like i really had to like search myself like i looked in the mirror one day like and i just hated what i saw i hated myself like i really i couldn't stand to look at myself so that was around the time where I was taking more medication. But at that time, I had a stomach ulcer. So I was like, okay. But I took one of the pills that really did, did help. It really did, did help. I don't know why I said did twice, but it, it really did, did help. Like, maybe that's just like me saying, like, it really helped. Because a lot of the stuff that it didn't help that I was taking, but that did help. And... Um... That was back in, that was right before I turned 24 in September. I got the stomach ulcer. Excuse me, like into July, going on August type. And I was just overworking my body. I was really, really overworking my body. And I was working at a thrift store. And I really, really loved the people. And I really, really loved the customers. And the customers really, really loved me too. And I um I was going through a really, really hard time that time. And it wasn't that I was prideful. It's just I just didn't trust the people I was with. And I'm I'm really learning. Like, I have horrible trust issues. Like, I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. I don't. And that's one of the hardest things in life. Like, when you've been hurt over and over and over again. And most of it because you were too selfish. Well, I was too selfish with... I wasn't selfish at all. Like, now I'm too selfish. I feel like now I'm too selfish. And I don't give any of myself away. And then... Like, I do, like, little by little. But then it's like, dang, like... I be opening my mouth and saying stuff. And it's like... I was telling somebody that before. Um, just today at work. 
where I'm so quiet because I be thinking about so much. But then there'd be instances where I open my mouth and people be, and I'll say something and people are like kind of reacting like a who do you think you are kind of way like I don't even be trying to be proud or nothing. I just be saying what's on my mind. But I don't. I really don't talk a lot. I don't. By the time I start talking, I wasn't talking for a long time. And a whole bunch of crap done built up. Because now people making fun of me, treating me weird because I don't talk. But then when I do talk, it's kind of like a... I respond to all of the things that I done been watched you do and all the things that you done showed me about you. And it's like now at this point, I don't want to get to know you because if you would have just given me the chance to get comfortable with you instead of trying to force me to talk and try to force me to communicate with you, like, that's one thing with me, like, I always... Like, I always just be quiet because people will show you who you are. I mean, people will show you who they are, like, when you meet somebody. So, off of that subject, I just, um, I just really don't, I really don't like medication. I don't. It, it really, like, it, medication truly almost ruined my life. And... I really just, I can't believe, like, they, they literally, like, they, Shire literally told me that, oh, we were, um, we were testing you. Basically, they were using it to test me because they had never used it before. And they were trying to see the side effects and stuff. And I'm just like... Y'all use me like a guinea pig. And like, what am I supposed to do about this? Like all of those years, all of those years that I suffered and all y'all did was just place me in a room with a person to ask me questions. And the questions that they asked me weren't even helpful. They weren't even asking me helpful questions. Like, and then most of the time, they would leave me to try to work out my emotions and how I feel myself. I don't even know what I'm feeling. How am I going to tell you? You're the therapist. Tell me something that's going to help me. Why make me open my mouth and figure out how I feel? Like, and like now, it's different because it's like, Now it's different because with my music especially, I'm able to like write through how I feel. Well, not now, but. I hate it here. But God is, God is, God is blessing me. So I'm a, um. I'm gonna focus on my blessings. But, um, yeah. If anybody can point me into the direction of what I can do, um, regarding this thing with Shire, because that was like a decade ago. It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years since I even spoke about this. 10 years? I held that in for 10 years, dog. Dang. I suffered for 10 years. Like, it could have been 15. It could have been 20. But still, like... Dang. 
who else who else did y'all do this to you know like i'd be asking questions like that i'd be like i know i'm not the only one i know i'm not the only one i know it i just I just needed, um, I just needed attention. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't crave attention. I didn't beg for attention. But all I wanted, all I wanted was for the hurting to just stop. I was hurting. I was hurting so bad. I was so angry for so long. I was so angry. And the one time, the one time I opened my mouth and spoke about why I was hurting so bad, why I was so angry. Dog, nobody listened. And that's wild. That's really where I started my music thing. And it wasn't even in one time. Like it was multiple occasions. Like there were so many occasions to where I was trying to speak to people and tell people what was going on with me. Ain't nobody listening. But Jesus did. I'll tell you that. Jesus, listen. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. These past few days have just been so overwhelming for me. And it's kind of been like overwhelming in a really, really good way. Um, I just experienced. I just... I just I've experienced so many beautiful people and it's like the conversations that we've had where both both ends kind of finally got a release because I was still dealing with some things I was still dealing with some things that I was trying to speak about but you know, other people be going through things and then this one going through things and then I'm going through things and so I gotta pause and wait and then be patient. I'm learning patience. I'm really learning a lot of patience through a lot of things that I've been going through. And I've just always been a quiet person. Like I was never that person to really like want the spotlight. I never I've never wanted a spotlight. Never, ever, ever. I was always that kid that's just, I just wanted to see other people happy. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to see other people happy because I was so miserable inside. I didn't know how to be happy, so let me just make everybody I can that I meet happy and smile. That was my happiness, seeing other people happy. And I just... I'm just, I'm just not going to give up. I swear I'm not. Like, if there's a way, like, I can get some, like, I don't even care no more. I, I got to a point where I don't care about getting answers from nobody else. I just, uh-oh. -uh. I met these two guys this year. And they've helped me so much. They've helped me so much. I was going through some hard times. And even when nobody else understood, you know, God always give you the one, give you that one or, or two people that when 
you going through something so horrible. And um you feel like ain't nobody listening. Like then somebody come along and it's like you look at them and then they look at you and then you looking at them in the eyes and you like I see something about you. Like that's what I experienced this year. And it was just like I see something about you. Like you know how you can see somebody or you can look at somebody you can just you can just see the love in them like and that's what I'll be telling people like I could look at somebody and I could just be like like you love people and then I can look at some people and I can just be like baby who hurts you you know and I used to be that person where people look at me and they'll be like, you got love in you. I want to be that me again. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the me that when people look at me, they like, that boy done been through some things. <laughs> So I um I'm still in recovery mode of a lot of things. A lot of things. So I um I focus all of that that emotion, all of that excitement, love, passion, and I put it in my music. Like nine times out of ten when I record, I literally freestyle everything. I don't write anything down anymore. I just don't. I don't, and people know me by that way. Like, I used to literally sit there. I just, if I write it down, I'm not going to know what's going on. I literally just freestyle. Whatever come to my head is whatever come to my head. And I post it. Ooh, excuse me. And I post it. Glory to God. Give glory to God. So, while I was going through all of that mess with my anxiety and the medication, I know it may seem like I'm rambling, and I'm going like this topic, that topic, this topic, that topic. But I don't talk. I don't talk. Like, stuff just be coming out. I don't even talk. I don't even be thinking about it. It just come out. So, I, um... <sighs> I'm just completely and utterly exhausted. I, um... I just wanted to tell a little... I don't know what this was. Daily journal. <laughs> I have no clue what this was. But I'm um, um, I'm I'm about to go to sleep.